In your bulletins, there's an outline if you'd like to follow along with us this morning. We're going to continue in our series, if you can kick the fluorescence on for me, on the one another's. The one another's. We've talked about serving one another, accepting one another, loving one another. I want to talk to you this morning about, and I titled it, Connecting with One Another. Now, I want to, I want to be careful. Uh, I, I, I had connect with one another. Then I thought, well, maybe connect. Yeah, maybe I should have named it, We Are Family, because what I want to talk to you about is about being the body of Christ and what that means. Uh, connecting with one another. You know, like when I was a kid, we'd say, hey, why don't we hook up later and we'll hang out. That meant, let's hang out. If you say hook up today, that means a whole different thing, doesn't it? And when I say connect with one another, I'm not saying, I want to talk to you today about, can you hear me still? <clears throat> there we go. I'm not saying that I want to talk to you today about connecting in unhealthy ways, about making wrong agreements, or about saying, I want to use you so I can get what I want. Uh, I'm not talking about connecting so you have to take responsibility from me and I don't have to. I'm talking about connecting as the body of Christ, the way the Bible has, has called us to be. Connected in such a way that when you're in tight relationship with Him first and others second, then everything flows naturally. So I want to talk to you today about being connected as the body of Christ and what it means to be a, a member of that body what it means to be a member of that body. You know, today we're living in a world of social media. Have you noticed that? iPods, iPhones, iPads, iTunes, I'm nuts. I mean, it's all over the place. You cannot go anywhere today without finding kids that have, I mean, chiropractic's got to be in some good business taking the kinks out of nuts that are like this. Because, and it's not even on kids, it's adults too. You know, we're, we're getting into the social media. We're constantly tweeting and Facebooking all the time, except during church, right? We don't do that. But, we're, we're, but any other time, we're texting and tweeting. <laughs> and tweeting, people are putting their phones away. We use it for everything. I use it for my notes. I use it for my Bible. We've got it all over the world, and we're just socializing and connecting with one another socially. But we're missing what it means to connect, uh, not just spiritually, but connect Connecting is the body of Christ. 1 Corinthians 12 is where we're going to go if you want to turn there today. And we're going to kind of focus on verses 18 through 26, but I'm going to jump around. Because I, 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 here, here's, here's what I want to try to get across to you. Three things. Uh, repeat after me. Ready? The head. The body. Okay. And its members. Head, body, members. Remember that. Head, body, members. Head, that's Christ. Christ is the head. Body, that's the framework in which the members of the body are to be a part of. The body does what the head says, and the body accomplishes it through using the members of that body. So the body's supposed to do what the head says. Notice I said, supposed to. Because sometimes our body doesn't want to do what our head tells us to do, and so it is in the church. Christ is the head of the church, the Bible says. At the church, the framework, uh, framework the church here on this earth is the body of Christ, and we are individual members of it. Without the individual members, we cannot be the body that Christ has called us to be. And so he takes some time and talks to us about this, how important it is. Uh, connectivity, God says, is very important. But not about connecting, it's who you're connecting to. Uh, it's about why you're connecting, what's the purpose behind it. And, and Paul in the Bible here he's, he's addressing the church at Corinth because there was a problem in this church, maybe like there is in some churches here today. And the problem was this. The problem is, is people were getting caught up in misdefining what it meant to be a part of the body of Christ. Church became something that they attended for a social event rather than it became about becoming a body of Christ and a body of believers who functioned as a body going where the head has directed so that they could accomplish the will of God. Are you with me so far? Okay. So, my dad's with me. How about the rest of you? Okay. All right. <clears throat> what I want to communicate today is five things. It's about how to become part of the body of Christ. How do we become connected? It's summarized in verse 27. Verse 27 says, Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. If you wanted to take all that we're going to talk about today, that's it right there. We're all a part of the body of Christ. Individually, we are members of this body. But what does that mean? Well, I'm glad you asked. 
We're going to break that down a little bit here. He wants us to know about connectivity to God, and so he uses something that you and I can identify with, the physical body, the framework. We all have a body. If you did not have a body, you would not be here today, but you do. And he says, I want to use the physical body to help illustrate an understanding of how important and how this body of Christ is supposed to work. The head tells the body what to do. So when you walk, guess what? You walk because your head said walk. That's why you walk. Your head said, raise your hands. Okay, I'm going to raise my hands. You know why I raised my hands? Because my head told my arms to stick them up. The head told the body what to do. Without the head telling the body what to do, the body wouldn't know what to do. Some of us, if we're not careful, can be a body that is not listening to the head, and therefore there's confusion that takes place. The moment that your body, your head tells your body to do something, and your body says, no, you need to go see a doctor. We do that today. We start, we start doing things, and, and, and if you, you told your hand, to don't touch the stove, but somehow your hand didn't want to move, and you realize something's not right, you would go see a doctor to address something that you can't see visibly that's taking place in the invisible somewhere so that you could address it because your head said move and your body said no. I would post to you today that if we're not careful, we can be a church where the head says move and the body says no. We wonder why we're limited. We wonder why we don't see his miracles. We wonder why we don't see God moving in our life. Why would God want to move through somebody who refuses to move when they don't want to move? Kind of like the children that you raise. And you, you ever have your ch kids tell you no? Yeah, yeah. You haven't, have you? I didn't think so. And, <laughs> maybe once or twice. And your kids tell you no. Go over and do that. No, I don't want to do that. Oh, excuse me, you don't want to what? You know what? You want to tune them up in a heartbeat because you've told them to move, but yet they say no, and then they say, but, but give me my allowance. You ain't getting no allowance. Why? Because you do not take responsibility for what it is that you do. You do not do anything around here. Why would I give you a reward for doing nothing? Now, here's the part that hurts. Why would God give us a reward when we do nothing with what he tells us to do? Now, you might say, Pastor, that's a little bit harsh. It is, but I'm not telling you that because he told me that I'm so good and you guys aren't, and I need to tell you. He told me that that's what I need to learn. So I'm just sharing it with you because I figured if I've got to go through this misery, you get to go through it with me. <laughs> and it's not genuine misery. What it is is mercy. God says it's mercy. He says, I'm going to show you something, Jim. I'm going to show you how good you're not. Excuse me? I, I don't want to know that. I'm pretty good at coming up with that on my own, God. Thank you very much. He says, no, there's more to it that you don't see that if you did see, you would surrender that part of your heart to me. But because you don't see it, you don't surrender it. And because you don't surrender it, you wonder why there's a void in your life. To which when God says that, all you can go is, okay. <laughs> what is it I need to see? Jim, he says, you need to understand what it, become, what it means to become a member of the body of Christ. You see... Christ is the head. Church is the body. We are individual members of the body. The body is responsive to the brain. When the brain says to do one thing and the body does another, there's a problem. Scripture is clear that Jesus is the head of the church. The church is the body, and the body is to do what the mind or the head dictates. This chapter is devoted to understanding what it means to becoming a part of the body of Christ. Paul says in the, that, that church in Corinth, there's a problem here. You are a body that has no head. You're, you're, you're a headless body of Christ. You're doing what you want to do, and because you have no head and nobody is giving direction, you all are just all over the place, and you wonder why God isn't good all the time, and all the time God isn't good. When the reality is, is He always is. But you have to get that mind of Christ. You have to have Him leading and directing. Otherwise, if you become a detached member of the body of Christ, you don't experience His life. You don't experience His, his freedom. He says... Uh, you've got to get this concept of membership. Uh, um, we get the concept membership church-wise. When you become a member of a church, we take that right out of the Scripture, 1 Corinthians 12. And it's because talk, he's talking about membership. The concept of membership, becoming a member of this church or any other church, uh, the concept comes from here. And when he speaks of becoming a member, he's speaking of a particular people having a particular attachment to a particular body for a particular purpose. You got that? With me? He says, 
there's a specific reason that you are committing to this church body at this time for a specific reason. He says you are becoming a member. So when he talks about members, he says and you and I become members of a local church, let's say. He's speaking of the decision to be identified and functionally involved with a local body of believers in order to learn together under the lordship and the rulership of Jesus Christ. It's in your outlines there, the definition of what I would say membership is. It's the decision to be identified and functionally involved with a body of Christians who are learning together to live underneath the lordship and the rulership of Jesus Christ. That's what membership is. It's not about filling out a piece of paper. It's not about attending the membership class. It's not about standing up here so everyone can see you and say, uh, hi, my name's John Doe, and I am now a member of Church of the Open Door. It's not about that. It's about somebody who has said, I feel the Lord has placed me here in this particular moment, this particular time, in the body of Christ, and I am making a decision to be identified and functionally involved with a body of Christians who are learning together to submit to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. So if you've ever been here, which if you are here today, you're here, and you say, I, 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 I don't know where to get plugged in. I don't know if I have any gifts, talents, or abilities. How could God ever use me? You are to be functionally involved in the body of Christ, not sitting on the sofa. Now, can we have comfort? Can we have some peace? So, yes, yes, yes. But he, he didn't call us to be couch potato Christians, okay? He said, get functionally involved. If you've ever thought, well, and here's what people do. They'll say, well... You, this is such a big enough church, they've got everything taken care of, right? Wrong. We need your help. We need you. Why? Because you are a functioning part of the body of Christ. And if you are functioning where God has placed you, then the body of Christ only becomes better, right? When you're hungry and starving and anemic, as soon as you eat some food, you become a little bit healthier, don't you? You become a little bit stronger. You become a little more energetic and you can accomplish more. So, Get involved in becoming a member. It means this, to be identified and functionally involved with a body of believers, learning what it means to submit to the lordship or the rulership of Jesus Christ. It doesn't mean come sit, soak, and sour. It doesn't mean that being a member is about coming and occupying a pew. Membership isn't about uh, showing up and just, just giving your time. It means to be identified and functionally involved. It comes out of the concept of this chapter in 1 Corinthians 12. What he wants you to understand is that you can only maximize your relationship with God through attachment to others. If you're detached in the body of Christ, there will be a breakdown in the flow of the life of God. For example, let's say you want to be a part of the body, and you say, but I just, just kind of, you know, not really like fully committed. I just want to be like a quarter committed, so to speak, you know, partially committed. That would be like me saying, I'm going to cut my hand off, and I'm going to set it on the pew right there. And, and it's going to stay right there, okay? It's still a part of my body. Is it really? Is it really? No, because it's been detached. There is a separation, a cutting off that's taken place. Just because my hand is four feet away from me laying on a table doesn't make it any more a part of my body just because it's in the vicinity. And some of us think that if we just get in the vicinity of God, if we just get in the vicinity of church, if we just sit in the pew and if we just crack our Bible and if we say, God bless my four no more, all of a sudden, at least that's good enough. We've, we've got the minimum standard covered, right? Wrong. He says, be a part. Connect with one another. Become a part of the body of Christ. You see, if I were to cut my hand off and set it over there, the hand will lose because it does not get the benefit of the body. But the body loses as well because it does not get the benefit of the hand. Both lose. So I'm going to be limited in my body if my hand is disconnected, even if it's in the vicinity. That's why he says in verse 7, to each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. The Spirit is like the blood flowing through the body, and it gives life. So God moves through connections, not just vertically with Him, but horizontally with others. And you will not be able to share that life and that love with others unless you're first and foremost receiving from Him. That's where it comes from. It, so the vertical is so tied to the horizontal. God wants every Christian to be functionally identified as part of the local body of Christians so they can get the benefit of that vertical relationship and share it horizontally with others. Share it with the people around them. 
So how do we do that? What do, what do we need to know about connecting with one another? Five things I'll give you about learning to connect with one another. Uh, just something kind of the Lord had kind of placed on my heart, and that's this. If we're going to learn to connect, not hook up, not wrong agreement, if we're going to learn to connect in a right, legitimate, biblical way, we're going to have to learn this. Number one, that the body of Christ consists of many different members. Right? Take a look around the, this room. Just look at the other people. Yeah. Do you, do you see anybody around here that looks just like you? Anyone? Anybody that has the same voice? They talk just like you. They look just like you. To that which we could probably say, thank you, Jesus. You ever wake up in the morning and go, I'm a part of the body of Christ? Well, look at this. It's easy to look at yourself and say, see what's wrong and to try to point all that out. But know this, the body of Christ consists of many different members. It says in 1 Corinthians 12, uh, verse 12, For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and all were made to drink of one spirit. So, there are many different people here today that make up the one expression of the body of Christ here at Church of the Open Door. We make up that body of Christ. Uh, Church of the Open Door is made up of all of these, these, these parts, and these, these parts are to connect with each other and to seek to connect with Christ. So that the body, or the full expression of God's life here at Church of the Open Door, can be fully realized throughout the life of the whole congregation. And that might have been a little confusing. You say, can you put that, you know, like in field trip terms here or something it means this that when you connect in a right way with God and with others we will accomplish God's will right here in Clinton Iowa you know we hear about it in other churches oh in Australia they got a great revival going on you know what revival is not going to happen until we learn to connect first of all with him and then with others in a right biblical way it's not going to happen you can try to manufacture it you can try to pretend it you can try to fake it but it will not work unless you learn what it means to connect as the body of Christ. That means not just connecting with Him. That means connecting with all these other members that you're looking at right now. And that's where you go, i got to connect with them. You see, we all make up the body of Christ, as you'll see. We all have different uh, members. And, and the other thing that we've got to learn is this, that, that as we make up this body of Christ, if we're detached from the body... There's no benefit. Do you, do you know that's why some people will go to church, but they will never join a church? You know why? Because they want the benefits of the body without the attachment. They want a benefit of a, of a family without having to commit to it. And that's a, that, that's a phenomenon right now, even in families in, in our culture today. We're trying to test things out, and let's see how it will go. We don't want to commit. We want the benefits, but we just don't want to commit. But you see, you can't have the benefit of the body without the attachment because God is demanding connectivity and not merely being in the same environment. That leads Paul to go a little bit deeper. And he says to this church, number two, he says, you guys got to remember this. Every member of the body of Christ has a part to play. Every member of the body of Christ has a part to play. Verse 15. If the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I don't belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I don't belong to the body, that, that would not make it any less a part of the body. In other words, if a body part said, I'm done. I don't want to be a part of this body anymore. I, I quit. I give up. I'm not into this. Well, you've created a problem both for you and for me. Because let's say you're an eye and you're trying to be the best I that you can be. The problem is, is if you say, I quit, I'm done. I don't want to be an I any longer. The problem that we have is this, that, that I, right now, if you quit being an I, there's no longer an I that I'm able to see through, that I'm able to be able to see things. The I is not working, so the I has got a problem. But now, I've got a problem because my peripheral vision has now been limited. You see, some people quit and they say, I'm just giving up, I'm done. But what you're giving up on or quitting is the body. And when you quit, it affects the body. And if you're the eye and you quit seeing, it limits the vision that can happen to be there. In other words, if you quit and you're not doing your part, the question will be, are you taking up space but not benefiting the space you're taking up? Because he says, I want you to benefit 
from being in the body of Christ. Are, are you okay? Got real quiet, so either it didn't make sense or something else happened. So, Are we taking up space? Just taking up space. Are we benefiting the space we're taking up? We have an important part to play. Number three, write this down. If you're going to learn about the connectivity that God would have for us, we have to understand this too. It's not all about you. It's not all about you. You ever have somebody say that to you? If you're going to be a part of this body of Christ, you have to know this, that the body consists of many members, and every member has a part to play. And guess what? Your part's not all that there is to play. It's not all about you. Now, why do I say that? Because I forgot that. When I'm doing my part, I think my part is the most important. And to me, my part should be the most important. But it doesn't mean it's any less important than the part that you play. And if we all are playing our part, and if we all are being uh, the best that we can, we're, we're completing and fulfilling the body of Christ. Verse 17 says, If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as he chooses. He says... It's not all about you. Using God's illustration, uh, let's say that you're the eye. Well, praise God you're an eye, okay? I'm glad you're fulfilling that. But the whole body doesn't consist of an eye. I, I, you're, you're just a piece of this big wheel. And that's why it says in Romans 12, 3, a man ought not to think of himself more than he, than he thinks. Because it's not all about us. It's not, it's, we're not that important. Paul says that you're a piece of something bigger. A critical piece, an important piece, a needed piece, but you're just a piece. You're a part of this bigger picture. Paul says we, we have to be some, become part of something bigger. If the whole body were an eye, then, then, then the body will not accomplish all that the body needs to accomplish because all it is is an eye. You see, we all have a part to play, and it's not all about us. If, if it were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be, the Bible tells us? You, you know, we have to learn what it means to connect as the body of Christ. Our body is so wired that, that did you know it, it communicates like that all the time? You ever bang your toe? Split your toe open? Break a toe? I was walking through the basement um, one day, and as I went down there, I broke my pinky toe. Of all toes, the pinky, the tiniest, littlest member of my body, screamed the loudest. I walked past a suitcase, and I caught the big wheel, and my toe went sideways. And when my toe broke, my toe told my ankle, ankle, something just happened. And my ankle informed my leg that something's not right, and my leg informed my brain there's pain going on, lift your leg and grab it. So my brain told my hand to grab my leg, and then my brain said, now scream as loud as you can so the neighbors hear you. <laughs> and I did. And this all happened just like this. Why did it happen just like this? Because there's a connectivity that's going on throughout the body. And the body said, toes broken. When toes broke, body, you better step into action. Do you know that's the way the body of Christ is supposed to function? That when one of the smallest members of the body of Christ experiences a brokenness and it cries out, the ankle, the foot, the knee, the hip, the hand, the mouth should all go into action and work as the body of Christ. Well, what does that mean? That means that we have to play our part. If you're a pinky toe, praise God, you're a pinky toe. And if you go through brokenness, the body needs to be there as the body of Christ. You walk through that together. The Bible says, as we'll see in a moment, when one member of the body suffers, the whole, bo the whole body suffers. And when one member rejoices, the whole body rejoices. But we, we don't get the benefit of that unless we understand it's not all about us. I mean, my pinky toe could have snapped and went, ah! We're broken, and my foot could have looked at it and said, big deal, you're a pinky toe. Deal with it. But our bodies don't work that way, do they? No, at least not mine. I'm a big sissy at heart, okay? When I hurt, I don't want pain. I don't want to feel the pain. My body communicates all the time. Telling, you know, what my body had to do was this. When my toe got broken, my, my, my foot told my brain to tell the other part of my body, pick up the weight. Because he, this leg can't handle it. Left leg, you better get ready. Muscles, wake up. Because you're going to have to carry the weight of what's going on. Because right now this leg cannot carry it. That's the body of Christ. It's the body of Christ. We are to become a member of a body that's functionally involved. Surrendering to the Lordship of Jesus Christ and learning together what that means. It's not all about us. We have to be a part of the body 
of Christ. Number four, write this down. Here's something else we learn about the body. Every member of the body of Christ must be viewed as valuable. It must, it must, it must be viewed as valuable. Verse 22, on the contrary, it says, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And on those parts of the body that we think less honorable, we bestow the greater honor. And our unpresentable parts are treated with greater modesty, which our more presentable parts do not require. But God has still composed the body, giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it. In other words, every part of the body is important, not just the visible pieces. Some people say, well, you know, I, I don't know, what is it that you need to do in this church? You know, how can I get involved? How can I get connected? Because all I ever see is people that are in the choir and singing and microphones and preaching. But do you know that sometimes there's a lot of, and the truth is, is there's a lot more invisible work that's going on to make those visible things happen. You may say, oh, I don't know how I can get involved. Maybe you're here today and you're talented with singing or playing an instrument. God bless you, get involved, because if you got me playing the guitar and singing to you, you will want to get on some medication real quick because I can't carry a tune. I can't play an instrument, but if you can, maybe you can use that to be a part of the body, to worship Him and glorify God. You see, when you get involved, then all of a sudden, the body becomes better. Maybe your giftedness is in smiling. I don't know how to do anything but smile. Excellent. We'll put you by a door because I want people to see a church that smiles, not one that looks like they've been sucking on lemons all week. Maybe you say, I don't know what my giftedness is. I can't stand and talk in front of people. I like to just hide out in the rooms. Good. We've got a room for you to hide out in. It's called a Sunday school room. We've got a video room. We've got a sound room. We've got places that they, they are using their gifts and their talents to accomplish what we're doing here today, to be the body of Christ. So never sit back and say, this church is so big, they've got to have it covered. They don't need my help. Oh, yes, we do, because it's when you get connected that the body becomes healthier and stronger and starts to grow. And when the body grows, then you need more people to get involved. It's not all about you, but you have to use what you have to accomplish his will. His will. You see, there's no insignificant member of the body of Christ. He, he talks about the physical body to make a spiritual point, but ladies, when you got up this morning and you got ready, you got to be careful here. I dug a hole first service I had to find a way to climb out of. But this morning when you got up, you, as they say, put your face on, right? You got the makeup out and you got those, I don't know anything about makeup. This is my disclaimer right now. But just something doesn't seem to be right about taking a sharp pencil and sticking it in your eye. <laughs> when I was a kid, yeah, don't run with scissors, don't run with pencils, and then moms get out a pencil and stick it in their eye. And you get, I can't watch it, but my eyes will water when I watch my wife do this and she'll be drawing and that, and then she gets out this brush thing that, you know, that, yeah, that thing that you smear stuff on your eyes. And um, you took time and did that. You put blush, lipstick. You probably put some other stuff that I can't even come up with. And you did this all so that you could have a great appearance, right? You want to look well. You, wanna, uh, you, you want to present well. But, but the reality is, is this. You embellish the external. And, and, and it looks like everyone here today got dressed, so you're doing great. We wore clothes. We covered the external. And, and that's good. But if the invisible things aren't working, the external things mean nothing. If the invisible things are not working, it doesn't matter how much lipstick you put on. If there's no life, it's dead. Muscles, if they don't work, you don't smile. See, nobody else is smiling. I got one person smiling back. You, did, you know, it's your muscles right there. If you didn't have those muscles, you'd be looking like this all day. You move your hands. Why? Because there's a connectivity that's taking place because of the, the tendons and the ligaments. Because they work, you can open and close your hands. That's why you can do that. If the parts that you don't see aren't working, then the parts that you do see are in trouble. They're in trouble. When you go to the doctor, you usually go there because you want to fix something you can't see. Say, doctor, I've got something going on. I've got a cough. I can't figure it out. The doctor doesn't say, cough. Let me see your cough. He didn't do that. He says, let's take an x-ray. Let's get a picture. Let's make visible that which is invisible. What's going on inside? There's something else happening. You know, as members of the body of Christ, we must be viewed, every member must be viewed as valuable because they are. They might not have the same responsibility. They may not have the same job description. But everybody matters. There are no big I's and little U's in the kingdom of God. 
That's why the Bible says, how you treat the least of these. You know, he says, maybe they don't have notoriety. Maybe they don't live in the nice neighborhood. Maybe they don't drive the fancy car. Maybe they don't have the perfect life. But how you treat the least of these, you first of all have done it unto me. You first of all have done it unto me. Have you ever tore your fingernail? Too far? You're biting it? Doing one of these and you pull on it you go, ah! And you realize you, you ripped it way down into the, into the quick there. You just, that hurts, doesn't it? I mean, that will just, that's horrible. I remember ripping it so deep and then I took the fingernails and tried to clip the corner, but I couldn't go so deep. So if I ever put my hands in my pocket, I'd catch it and rip it just a little bit more. You'd always be reminded, oh, that hurts. And it's so horrible. You'll put a Band-Aid around it to try to bandage it up because it got torn. When it's so small. It's so insignificant, but yet when it's torn, it makes you holler because every member matters. Every member matters. Every member of the body, no matter how insignificant you might think it is, God says it is significant. And when we become connected as the body of Christ, everybody matters. Everybody is significant for the working of the body underneath the rule of Jesus Christ. Now that right there is the church. That's the church he's called us to be. So, things may change, but we've got to be willing to roll with the changes that God brings. You know, there was a, a man, an African-American pastor, had a church with mostly African-Americans. All of a sudden, some white people started showing up. Anglos, they would call them, and, and they said this. He went to the pastor, uh, an African-American elder, went up to the African-American pastor and said, got a lot of Anglos that are coming now. And the pastor said, uh-huh. He said, well, what, what are we going to do about this, Pastor? And he said, well, what do you mean, what are we going to do about this? He said, well, is there a problem? And he said, well, you know how they are. That's what he said to the pastor. And the pastor said, you've got a misdefinition of what it means to be a member of the body of Christ. To which that deacon, that elder said, well, Pastor, if you're not going to do something about it, I don't think I can be a part of this church. You know what the pastor said? Bye. He said, go. Because that's not what the body of Christ is. It's not about a color, it's not about a shape, it's not about a size, it's about knowing that you are a member of the body of Christ. There are people in this community that are not here today that are to be a member of the body of, this, of, of Christ, but they just don't know it yet. They don't know what part they play. They don't know how much love that God has for them. And when you come into the family of God, you must adjust to the family of God. You cannot get the family of God to adjust to you. You can't get that backwards. People who bring different experiences, they bring different orientations. That's all in order to enhance the body of Christ. But don't just fake it. Don't fake it till you make it kind of a thing. Otherwise, you'd be too quick to just give up. You know, you ever remember watching The Lone Ranger and Tonto? Anyone watch that on TV? You're going to date yourself by raising your hand. I'm just letting you know that now. Lone Ranger and Tonto were driving down the road. Actually, they weren't driving, were they? They were riding their horse... <laughs> They're riding their horse down the road. All of a sudden, they run into some Indians, and the Lone Ranger said, Tonto, you know, Indians. And Tonto said, what we do now, Kimosabi? And they said, let's go east. So they went to the east, and they ran into some more Indians. Tonto said, what we do now, Kimosabi? He said, we go to the north. And they went to the north, ran into some Indians. Tonto says, Kimosabi, what we do now? You go south. And they went south, and they ran into some more Indians. Now they're surrounded. Indians are all around. And now the Lone Ranger has the question, and he looks at Tonto, and he said, Tonto, these are your people. What do we do now? Tonto said, what you mean we, pale face? <laughs> we will switch like that. We say we want to be a part of the body. We say we want to be functioning. We want God's glory. God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. Go share your love. Oh, I can't do that. We want to be a part of the body. We want to use our gifts, our talents, and our abilities. We feel moved when we're here on a Sunday. The Holy Spirit does something, and we leave, and all of a sudden, we start giving God the glory on Monday, and then our, our, our posse shows up, our friends show up, our coworkers show up, and we switch like that. You see, God says we are a member of the body. We are a valuable part of the body, and it's not something you can switch on and off. It's not a clock that you can punch. We are a part of the body of Christ. The problem is, is there's a dreaded word that we fear today, and the word is cancer. We fear the word cancer because there's a disease that's taking place in our, in our world today, and you know what cancer is? Cancer is really cells within the body 
that are rebelling against the body. That's what cancer is. Cancer is cells that are within the human body and they're renegade cells and they're saying, I know I'm in this body. I know I'm a kind of a part of the body, but I want to do what I want to do. I don't want to go along with the program. So therefore, I'm going to do my own thing. And not only am I going to do my own thing, but I'm going to invite others to join me. All of a sudden, those renegade cells will find other cells to get them to join their club, which they will call the cell club. And before you know it, a lump will form in the body. And it becomes known to the body. Yeah, that might be okay if the lump just stayed there. That might be okay if the lump just didn't do anything else, but you know what that can those cancer cells will do? Those cancer cells will recruit more cancer cells, and they will, they will move throughout the body, and they will start to bring a destruction, and they will start to bring a death to the body because the goal of cancer is to shut you down, to close you out, to destroy you. And far too many churches today have cancer cells. People who, who, who want to stay in their church, but they don't want to be uh, connected with the program. They don't want to be going where the body is going or where the head is telling the body to go. They want to do their own thing. Uh, irregardless of what the kingdom of God has to say, they don't care about the plan of Christ. They just want to do their own thing, and so they'll form a group, and we call them cliques. We call them groups of people that get together for, for, for fulfilling their own purposes. So they get their group together to do their own independent thing without connection to where Christ and the body are going. Not knowing that they're bringing destruction. Which is why 1 Corinthians says, anyone who destroys the church of God, God himself will destroy. Which is why in Romans 16 it says, look out for those who bring division in the church because they are destroying the flow of God to the ministry of the body. You see, you don't want your hand doing its own thing, do you? How would you like to not have control of your hand? It can do whatever it wants. It can be, you can be talking and having a discussion and it's doing all these weird, wacky things, you know. It can be doing anything. You wouldn't like that. It's kind of like going to the dentist. And when you go to the dentist, they put Novocaine in your mouth and what happens to your face? It goes numb. You lose control. You're loose hanging down here. Spit and drool are in the middle of your lap. You try to talk, but every time you do, you throw a goober up in your forehead. It's just a horrible sight. You have no control over the body. None of us want a member of our body to be out of control. We want control of our body. And God is the head. The church is the framework of the body. And we are members of it. Some of us are not functioning the way that we should be. Some of us are not getting involved in areas. You see, you want every, everyone making the appropriate contribution to the body so that the flow of God's glory and His goodness comes to benefit each and every one of us. Do you know that's why Satan wants us in disunity? Did you know that? Because he knows this. He knows that wherever there's disunity, God will be cut out of the equation. God will be cut out of the equation. Do you know that's why he wants you and your mate fussing and cussing and fighting all the time? You think it's only your personality. You think it's only your background. Well, that's part of it, but he knows that if he brings this disunity in there, God will not work in the midst of disunity, and he will be cut out of the equation. Satan wants to break up the unity in order to keep God out of the equation because the enemy understands that God will not work where there is conflict. And you may say, well, I have conflict all the time. No, I'm talking illegitimate conflict. We're all going to run into conflict. We're all going to have areas where we struggle. We're all going to bump heads. If you don't fight, fuss, or get in arguments, I would be more concerned. Because that's going to happen. But we're talking illegitimate conflicts. God will not function in that. He does the same thing with the churches. When pastors are against pastors, elders are against elders, members are against members. The enemy wants to create this era, uh, this, this attitude of disunity because he knows that the Holy Spirit will not function in that. He will not, he will not bless that. He will not let his presence be known. See, God will not show up in confusion, which is why Paul says everything must be done in order. 1 Corinthians 14. It must be harmonized with him. Well, he closes in saying this, and I know it's 12 o'clock, and I'm going to try to finish up here real quick. But number five is this. If we're going to understand what it means to be, the, uh, to be the body of Christ, understand this, that the goal of connecting with one another is supposed to be about caring for one another. It's supposed to be about caring. You don't connect to get more information. You don't connect so you can figure out what's going on with them and them and be a nosy busybody. You don't connect with people so you can say, yes, I have my membership at Church of the Open Door. When's the last time you went? Uh, let's not talk about that. It, 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 
the reason that we are to connect with one another is to show care. Verse 25, there may be no division in the body, um, but that the members may have the same care for one another. Care for one another. You know, if you've ever been on a cruise ship, anyone ever go on a cruise ship? Those are fun, aren't they? I, I, I've been on one. Our family went on one. And I loved it. You know why I loved it? Because when we paid the price up front, from then on out, you could do whatever you wanted. You could eat till you puked. You could, you could go watch movies. You could drink soda. I mean, you could hook up a, a vein and pump Pepsi into it if you wanted. You paid the price. You now got to enjoy all the benefits that came of that. You can come and go as you please. You can go to different ports. It's all in the price that was paid. And the price that you paid, you paid so that you could cruise. So you could chill. Some people just cruise into church and say, what do you have for me? They cruise into a church and say, what have you got to, for, for me today, Church of the Open Door? What is it that you're going to enlighten me with? And we take on a cruise ship mentality, missing the fact that God has never called the church to be a cruise ship. He's called it to be a battleship because He knows that we're fighting a spiritual warfare. And there's nothing that we can do in a cruise ship that's going to be able to fend off the enemy. But on a, on a battleship, things change. On a battleship, you need all hands on deck. On a battleship, everybody needs to take up their space. On a battleship, there's a, there, there's a mess hall. On a battleship, there's beds, but it's not all about cruising and sleeping. It's about warfare. You see, you may be a finger in the body of Christ. Be the best finger you can. You may be a toe in the body of Christ. Be the best toe that you can be. You may be an arm in the body of Christ. Be the best arm that you can be. But please know that this is not a cruise ship. This is a battleship, and the battle is real. Let me end with this. I was walking around a campground <clears throat> over in Amboy. And you ever seen these bees that make their nest in the ground? Those dirty little dogs. I mean, it's not like I'm looking for a beehive, but if I'm going to, I usually look up. And um, what happens is these little beehives, they will build their, their kingdom in my yard. They didn't pay rent. They didn't even send me a letter saying, hey, we the bees are going to reside as of March 13th. They didn't tell me nothing. They just took over. And if you ever get close to a beehive, those, beehive, those bees will let you know. Well, that day I happened to not only get close to their kingdom, but I happened to step on it. And when I stepped on that beehive, three bees immediately let me know, we don't like your foot on our house. Bap, 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 and they hit me in the ankle and I jumped. The body, because it's all connected, said, you just got hit. And my leg said, okay, but I don't feel it yet. And then after a while it said, now I feel it. Scream. And I started hopping into the house. I don't know if I'm allergic to bees. I've never been bit by a bee. I'm hobbling into the house thinking, am I going to swell up and die? What's going to happen here? And I thought all the time while this is hurting, I thought those stupid bees, who do they think they are that they can come in here and build a nest in my house and they can set up their kingdom and I go, like we paid rent or something or like we own this property? Who do they think they are? And it started to tick me off. I'm getting mad at a bunch of bees, okay? I know it's pathetic, but it was what it was. I've been stung three times in the leg. These bees have, have, have said my, their kingdom is here. I stepped on it and they lit me up. They lit me up. And here's what I did the next day. I went and bought this magical formula that I poured down the hole and took care of their kingdom. Do you know what they did? I went out the next day and there was a hole in the ground. Hole in the ground, empty. But 10 feet over there, you know what they did? <laughs> Dirty dogs set up another kingdom. They set up another kingdom in my yard. Why? Because they live and they exist to take over. They don't care. They don't, they don't have any disregard. They don't know any difference. They just know that they want to do what they want to do. And do you know that the enemy, he doesn't care about you and me. He comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And he, but, but we are to be a people that are a working body, the body of Christ, to build his kingdom. And we are to expand his kingdom. We are to take over and to demonstrate the rule of God that lets the enemy know if you come over to our kingdom, we're going to light you up. How can we do that? Because we're the body of Christ. We represent a kingdom with the fire of the Holy Spirit to live out and live under the rule of God when every member plays their role.
That's the part, that's who the church is. So, I end by saying this. Membership. It's not about a card that you fill out. It's a decision that you make to become a part of a group, of a body of believers that are going to get functionally involved because they want to learn to live under the lordship of Jesus Christ. That's who we are to be. May we be that church here in Clinton, Iowa.